cometh a coming. And you need to ground yourself in spaces like this that free you have the opportunity to get in touch with your core, with the essence of who you are, because in all of the swirling and the changing and the breaking through and the breaking down and whatever, you find the core of the, your I am presence. No matter what's going on, you can always come back to I am. I am. That, that's your safety place uh, in yourself. Um, okay. Wow, I don't know if I picked the right Sunday to do this, but we will start. I may have to give this to you in two, two sessions. Uh, I want to say to you before I begin this subject, uh, a couple of weeks ago something happened here that I call a breakthrough. And about, mm, I don't know, half of you really received something. And half of you was like, I don't know about that, what's going on. And that was the coming forth of spirit language or light language or in the Greek glossolalia, which is been known as speaking in tongues. I want to make sure that before I bring this uh, to us, that this is not being brought to you that everyone, this is for everyone. If it's, we all don't do the same thing here. I'll give an example. A lot of you are drawn to come to the meditation on Sunday morning, not all of you, but there's a certain group of you that seem to be very attracted to be here at 1030 and do the meditation. That doesn't make the rest of you who don't come any different because you don't come. It's just that is what is drawing them. So we all have different things that we resonate with. And that's the beauty of diversity. That's the, that's the idea of, uh, uh, of a body of people that are unique and diverse and that can find their own gifts and find their own places and callings that is within them. So I'm going to just take a chance here for just a moment and use something in the Bible to maybe make my point. But it talks about how that, and this is in 1 Corinthians and Paul's writings, uh, that talks about the diversity within a community. And it says that there are gifts. There are gifts. And all the gifts came from the same spirit, but they're different gifts of the spirit. And it mentions a list of those gifts. One is wisdom, faith, the gift of healing, miraculous powers, the gift of prophecy, the speaking with tongues and the interpretation of tongues and the great mysteries of the spirit. So it is clear that in a body of people, and think of it as a body, think of it as your body. All the different parts that make up your body, has a, each one has a function. Your, your liver doesn't want to do what your kidneys do. And it doesn't feel any superior than one to another, they just have a different function in the body. So everything is made of this diversity that works together. All I'm asking you is to keep an open mind because I'm going to try to show you either this Sunday or next Sunday, I hope I get to it, but I'm gonna show you that something's happening out there outside of religion. It's outside of this thing that I was brought up in, in the Pentecostal church of speaking in tongues. There's a lot that needs to be adjusted in that area, let me tell you. But it didn't start out that way. It started out as a movement, a breakthrough that happened in 1903. A little group of people met on Azusa Street in Los Angeles, California. They just felt a hunger in their heart. They didn't know what for but they just started meeting in this house and just praying and waiting. Sometimes we pray, but we don't wait. Hmm? They prayed and then they waited. And they knew what they was waiting for. And all of a sudden, uh, 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 the spirit just came upon them and they began to speak in a different kind of language. 
So it started out pure and it started out good, but like everything else that does, man comes along and organizes it. <laughs> I used to tell a story about the devil and a friend's walking down the road and there's a guy up ahead of them and every once in a while the guy ahead was picking up a little piece of truth. Every once in a while they just pick up a little bit of truth and the devil's friend was thinking, you're surely going to do something about this. You don't want this guy getting the truth. The devil didn't bother at all. He just kept talking. And pretty soon the guy says, why aren't you doing something about this guy picking up truth? He said, don't worry about it. He'll organize it. <laughs> and unfortunately, this thing that we call the, the spiritual community, or in the Greek, ekklesia, is the, the translation of the word church is from a, a Greek term. That doesn't mean the building of buildings edifices, stained glass, and all of the big buildings. Everybody thinks this is the church. This is no church. The people are the church. You didn't get up this morning to come to church. The church got up and came to the building. Because the church is made of spiritual members who come together and make an ecclesia or a community together, and they bond and join together. But it was never meant to organize it. It was meant to be a living organism living and moving and changing and growing until about the fourth century when so much was being poured out in the form of knowledge. 2,000 years ago, after Yeshua came along and opened up a portal, knowledge started pouring into the earth that had never been before. And people were having direct knowledge from source without a filter, without a preacher, without a priest, without a rabbi, without anybody telling them, interpreting, it was coming directly to the people and people were having what they call gnosis. Knowledge. Gnosis means direct knowledge. It means not knowledge that's been filtered or reinterpreted. It means direct between universal body, our mind, an individual mind. And they got so concerned about what was going on that they said, we got to get a hold of this. So they decided in 315 to organize it into the Christian church. And that was the beginning of Catholicism. Catholicism was the organizing of what was spiritually happening for the first two centuries. We would live in a different world today if man had come, not come along and tried to take the place of spirit. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to get today because I'm feeling it. <laughs> this, I'm, I'm going to throw this in. This is what Antichrist is. Everybody's looking for the Antichrist to come. It came 200 years after Jesus was here when the church was organized. The Antichrist, if you study it, the word anti. One, on one level, means against, but on a level in Greek, it means instead of. In other words, whatever happened at the beginning of the movement of spirit. See, spirit came in on the day of Pentecost. It did. It came in and set upon them like a flame of fire, set on their heads. And it says they heard everybody speak and understood their own language. Now, this was not unknown tongues. It was the language of all of the nations that had come there. But everybody didn't know everybody's language, but supernaturally they understood each other. Wouldn't you love to have a day like that? Yes. Uh, when the right understands the left, the left, the right, and the conservatives, and, and all of these different things that are dividing and setting us, I say bring on the flame. Huh? That's why we talk about the violent flame here. I believe with all my heart that was the coming in of the Holy Spirit in the violent flame that set upon their minds and the mind of, of the divine was given to the human mind to understand direct knowledge. But up until that time and just as in Azusa Street 
The Spirit was guiding the people. There was no program. There wasn't a a preacher studying the sermon for Sunday or Saturday or whatever it is. It was just people coming together and opening their hearts and their minds, and the Spirit came through them. The songs were born. Uh, Healings happened. Nothing was planned because the Spirit was truly guiding the people. The first thing we say every Sunday morning right back there is we're Spirit-guided, are we? Well, we're getting ready to be more spirit guided, so hold your hats on (laughs) and fasten your seatbelts. So what I'm saying to you, the Antichrist was when man took over the place of the spirit and usurped it and began to lead the church and suppress the spirit. In that place, dogmas were formed, doctrines were formed, traditions were formed, ceremonies were formed that was not inspired by spirit, but began to be handed down from generation to generation until one generation moved further and further and further for what it means to be a spirit-guided, heart-centered divine consciousness. Heart light is attempting to restore that place and give the place back to the leading of the spirit. What is happening out there is interesting. It's happening in different parts of the world. It seems to be centering itself, a lot of it in Australia, New Zealand, in that part of the world is where a lot of this light language is being focused upon. These people are not, as I can tell, and Leslie can help with this, she knows a little bit more, but I don't think they have such a big religious background. It is not within the confines of a lit religion at all. It's just something that is sovereignly happening. It happened here a few Sundays ago for you that was here. And some of you just not comfortable. You know why? Because what I heard was, I don't understand what's going on. Listen, I speak English and you don't understand what's going on. Most of what I say in English you don't get. What do you think you're going to get when spirit speaks its own language? But guarantee you, the part of you that's saying, I don't get it and I'm uncomfortable, has nothing to do with your spirit that's receiving it. It's spirit speaking to spirit without a filter. Huh? The best thing is your brain didn't get it. Because if your brain would have got it, it would have given over to its ego self and the ego would have put its agenda into it, which is always to keep us separate. That's the agenda of the ego, a separation. So I'm going to start here and just see kind of where this goes. We have a workshop here today, so I'm a little concerned about the time, but... Uh, I think so. I think we're going to have to do it. I want to, uh, I, there's, what I'm giving you is not a lot of Bible because I'm going to give you science and I'm going to give you completely a different route to this. But I do want to start out with, uh, from the Mirror Bible that you all know I love so much and speaks to me of all the Bibles that's ever been put out there and written. First Corinthians 14, 2 and 4. For one who speaks in a strange tongue speaks intimate spirit mysteries between one and God, but no one can understand. While speaking in tongues is primarily for the personal edification, prophetic instruction, and inspiration to the church. I want you to get this. Speaking in a tongue of spirit is intimacy with God. Hmm? When you are speaking in spirit, you're speaking what is a mystery to your brain. Uh, 
And that's not a bad thing. So, Arum Lishmeyak Shichala Kakamahishita Mahaya. Now, I am, you think I'm speaking, I'm not, I'm speaking in Aramaic. Some of you wouldn't have known that because if you don't know Aramaic, I'm, I'm quoting the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic. Awum, Nishmeya, Haya, These are all Aramaic words that would have been Jesus, what Jesus spoke as a mi Middle Eastern person because he didn't speak English. What? <laughs> That's the silliest thing I ever heard. If you think everybody in the Bible spoke English, and you better stay away from that Eastern stuff. It's of the devil. It's false. Where do you think these people came from? Everything they spoke and did was Eastern culture. <laughs> the experts of this phenomenon gave it the word glossolalia from two Greek words, glossia meaning tongue or language and ladion meaning to speak and to make a sound. <clears throat> I want to share with you a couple of videos that we've put together and show you what I, they can say in just a few minutes that maybe I, you'll think for me, well, he's in that crazy stuff. I don't, that's all David's doing. It is not. It's just bigger than me. But before I do this, let me say, how many of you know what little potential we use of ourselves? Don't you dare think we're the, the top of the heap of evolution, because <laughs> we got a long way to go. We're still crawling out of the mud, trying to figure out who we are and why we're here and, and all these kind of things that are, are mystery to us. Trying to find the answer to all of our isms genderism, racism, uh, homophobiaism, all these kind of isms. We just can't quite figure out how do we fix this? How do we deal with it? Because the answer isn't in what you already know. The answer is going to be awakening in the potential of your unknown. Oh, somebody help me. You got it? They say we use 10% or so of our brain. Now they said that based upon Einstein who used over 10% of his brain. If Einstein used 10%, how much is the average guy out there using? Not much. We have so much more mind power to awaken in ourselves. And that's what we're trying to do on Wednesday by using these mind powers as the 12 attributes or faculties of our inner power within us. Okay? You only use 3% of your DNA genetic material. That's as far as we've used out of six billion letters. you got three billion letters in one side of the helix. you got three billion letters on the other side of the helix that wind around each other and cross each other and are connected by nucleotides until it forms a ladder. Oh, a ladder. A ladder to where? Jacob was dealing with issues in his life in the old story of Jacob. He's dealing with answers. He's trying to figure out what, what his life's about. What, where's he going and whatever. I mean, he was wrestling with everything in life. And on his journey, he laid his head down. Don't you get this metaphysically? He laid his head down on a rock, it says. The rock represents the hard issues of his life that he couldn't get his mind wrapped around that was going on for him. Why is this happening to me? What is the answer that's happening to me? And in this place, he falls into a state of consciousness. 
And in this state, he has a dream. Now, when the scripture tells you they're in a dream, they're really telling you they're waking up because they were already in the dream. <laughs> and he dreams of a ladder that ascends from earth into heaven. And angels are ascending and descending. Now, angels come from a word that means messengers. So there is energetic light data ascending and ascending on the ladder. And the rungs represented the multi-levels of consciousness. So today, I want you to know there is a ladder for us to climb out of the muck of a dimension that is in peril and is falling apart at the seams in this 3D world. It is time you lay your head down and have this vision of a ladder that's going to bring you out into the higher states of yourself and who you are. All right. One thing that I loved about that story is the God he was looking for wasn't on the ladder, but above the ladder. Above the ladder. <clears throat> oh, there's so much I want to say. Um, see what I want spirit to give me here. I have before me brain scans of people that speak in spirit or light language and what it does to the brain versus those who do not. Scientists have done brain scans on those speaking in spiritual language and find chemical changes. They find this is believable even when some others do not. This is a strange twist of circumstances since usually science will try to oppose religion here. There is some scientists that believe that there is more yet beyond our religious Christian and other beliefs. Brain scans of those speaking in tongues of glossolalia uh, experience a temperature change in the right and left cerebral hemispheres. The neural science of speaking in tongues, the New York Times has covered a recently published brain scanning study of five individuals who speaking in tongues and experience known as glossolalia where someone appears to be speaking an incomprehensible language over which they seem to have no control in the left brain but is coming through them and not from them. I've done a lot of research. I've done research that heaven's cure for anxiety. Anxiety disorders are most common mental health are the most common mental health issues in the United States out of one out of six adults. Take antidepressant and anti-anxiety medita medication, both inside and outside the church. Anxiety is a, a rampant. <laughs> I tell you, you take it when you go to church, you need it. The people are desperate for relief. So tongue speaking is not due to increased mental effort. It is due to relaxing the mind. Huh. Stay with me. Over the last some years, the hardcore, of, um, hardcore materialism in science has uh, encoded. It's getting open to spirituality. In other words, si there's an aspect of science that's beginning to get outside of its boundaries and begin to do some deeper out-of-the-box research in this. There are ideas that come from the field. There's your key. Where does these sounds come from? In the field. The field that is all around you. The field of all possibility. which leave room for spirituality to explain. 
One of the plasticity of the brain, and that's a new science, that now we know the brain is not set like in stone, but it is able to be changed. You can change it. This incredible is an idea of fire together and wire together. Idea that is not hardcore driven by material things, but are wired uh, to adapt to the environment and the nature nurture distinction uh, of the and beyond the pre, uh, predetermined brain. Tongues does produce measurable changes in brain activity and blood flow in the brain. Certain part of the brain experiences decreased activity, those that reflect consciousness and cognitive control, structured language, and learning memory. So I want to show you, um, did you show the brain no, thing? Did. Okay. The brain thing. Brain scans. Okay. I don't know what's behind me going on here. But it showed that speaking in tongues, the frontal lobe responsible for language does not light up when we're speaking our regular learned language. <laughs> speaking in tongues then lightens up a part of the frontal cortex of the brain, <coughs> expanding our ability to receive more consciousness. So I said well ago that we only use 3% of our genetic material. 97% of our DNA has been labeled junk DNA. You may have heard that term, junk DNA. Junk DNA is the, uh, the way the old Newtonian science seen as uh, part of our DNA that we don't need anymore because it was left over from our evolution of the past. Well, that has shifted. Now we don't see it as past, we see it as future. Those who activate that part of our DNA that holds answers will find answers to every illness and disease that's on the planet will be found in the unpotential part of our DNA. That's why the activation of DNA is so important, which we have offered in our phase three uh, in, in DNA work. You see, uh, we live in a 3D world, right? Well, the caretakers of 3D were human beings. Well, we didn't take care of it really well. We've not done well with, as caretakers of our planet, of nature. We've kind of let it go to hell in a handbasket in many ways. But now as we're moving through 4D to a 5D world, the caretakers will be the Palladians. So what she was saying is that they are coming close enough in that they want to try to speak to us in their own, in their own tongue, in their own language. Now that is called other tongues, not unknown tongues. The Palladians have a tongue, just as each culture in America has a tongue. There's German, there's Spanish, there's, there's many different tongues of people. Well, there's many tongues and I realize this is for people who are ready to go on the, uh, beyond the bounds of earth world. And I think we're ready for it. I think some of you have been in the closet long enough <laughs> about uh, such things as UFOs and other planets and things like that. I, I think you need to come out now and realize it's time for us to realize that we're not, or we're not just earthly beings, we're universal consciousness. Yeah. And I think that we're getting ready to really have a breakthrough and a great uh, movement. And I think as that happens. So let me kind of close with this. Uh, so much I want to give you. Uh, if you're interested in this, then we'll plan a workshop and you come and we can really take it apart. Um, if you individually want to uh, experience this after the workshop, you can come individually and we can work together and see if this is some level that you want to uh, reach into. But don't be frightened, be open to it. And even if you're deciding this is not for me, don't criticize it, don't judge it, just let it be what it is. How can I? I would not be here with you today if it was not my experience 62 years ago that laid me on a cold cement floor in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I laid there and spoke in tongues for over 45 minutes. 
That's where I got my calling. That's where I was clear about my life path. Everything happened because of that. How can I sit here and deny that with you? I feel that I have, and, I, and I'm not trying to sound um, what, what it sounds like, but I compromised myself to come into the New Thought community. And I came into the New Thought community because of acceptance. That was my draw to New Thought and to unity and all of that because there was so less judgment about who uh, we are as human beings that for the first time I found a place that I could be all of me and be accepted and loved. But to do that, I realized that I had to compromise some of my other spiritual experiences that was not embraced within the boundaries of New Thought. But at Heartlight, Spirit Universe has given me a space where I don't belong to any organization. I don't answer to any uh, overseers or presbyters. I don't have any headquarters but in heaven. And therefore, I am here to open myself to be moved and led and guided by the spirit that is breaking through and making itself available. And when it does, when it does, it's going to activate parts of you parts of you that doesn't have any other language but the language of spirit. The language of spirit. I saw a couple of hands going up here. Yeah, yes. I visualized a, a huge shaft of white light in the center of this room. All right. The time that the light All right. Light. Hear that? It, it is true. It's yes. True. She is truly a seer. No <laughs> doubt about it. Okay. So I just wanted to introduce this to you. It's probably the wrong Sunday because we had so many guests and different things, and I wanted everybody to, be, to use their wonderful gifts, and thank you for doing that. But we will uh, do it. I can show you some more science if you need it, if that's what your left brain needs. Um, and don't worry about it. Uh, we're not trying to get you into something you don't want to get into or do something you don't want to do. But I do think that you that will become open to what the Spirit is saying to us in now, in 2024, if there's never been a time we need a spirit breakthrough, it is in the time that we are living today. Yes, sir. I just want to let you know through what you've just been speaking about that uh, the spirit came to me. I was in Costa Rica and we did some things on yoga mats. Yes. Speaking in tongues. So, uh, spirit told me to, at some point in time that. Uh, to come speak to you with love, mm -hmm. within love, and for love for each and every one of you. So at some point when you... We'll, well you absolutely, we're, we're, we're very open. Do that for all of you. Wow! Yeah. See, all I had to do is just crack the door a little bit, <laughs> and it's going to start showing up. But I want you to know this is not an old repeat of being overly emotional stimulated uh, in the church that I was in. I did not get it that way. I got, had a sovereign experience for me. But, but because I had a sovereign experience, it brought me out of the church, not into the church. <laughs> yeah, it called me out. Come out of her and be no more partaker. And that's what I heard to come out. And that was 62 years ago. So we'll talk about it more. We'll deal with it more and we'll just ask stay open to it uh it's not something that's going to happen every service but if it's going to happen i'm not going to quench it folks because spirit is giving us let me give you this one for i hath not seen nor ear heard the things that are prepared for them that love god for to the natural mind they are foolishness but yea, the Spirit searches the deep things of God. Yeah. Let us take a moment. At the end of all my messages, I don't do sermons. I just ask that you bring it into the altar of your higher self. I ask you to take what you don't understand and not judge it right or wrong, good or bad, truth or false, but hold it in the neutral place 
in the sashumna of the mind, in that neutral prana that runs through us and hold it. If it is for you and you hold it, it will resonate out of you, your innate own information and knowledge. You will have a self experience. This is the difference in why I'm not trying to take that place of spirit. I don't want you to do because what David said or what David teaches or what David believes. I'm just giving you information to bring in that you can contemplate. And if that information is for you now, doesn't mean it's not gonna be for you three months, two months down the road. But if it's not for you now, you hold it in the natural, natural place. And then all of a sudden, say you leave here today kind of confused about, I don't know what it's talking about, what's going on. But all of a sudden, let's say by Tuesday, you're walking the dog, you're going down to the, you're doing whatever you're doing in a kind of a meditative space. You're in your space and all of a sudden you have an epiphany. Oh, I get it. I get it. Well, that came from you to you, not from a source outside yourself. Just be open. Hear what the Spirit is speaking to His church. Some of you are seeking answers in your life. Some of you are going through some very challenging times Maybe through a marriage, a relationship, health, financial. Maybe you're going through some depression, discouragement, whatever you're going through. And you need some clarity. You need some direction. And you may find it beyond the boundaries of your own understanding. This is all about control, people. The hardest thing that we can let go of is control. And when you hear these tongues, you feel out of control. Good. Just take a deep breath. And in your heart, just say yes, yes. to the universe. Yes to all that you have to give me, I am ready to receive it in this moment. I said yes, yes, yes. I said yes. Yes. Oh yes. I said yes. I said yes, yes, yes. I said yes. I said yes, yes, oh yes, I said yes, I said yes, yes, I said We at Heartlight say yes to all that is prepared for us. We are here as your availability to move in us, through us, and as us. We are ready to you expand our consciousness beyond the boundaries and the lines that we have drawn for ourselves out of our comfort zone. Make sure we don't end up in a box. Make sure we don't become stuck. But let us be your availability in Charlotte and in the world itself as a point of light that we heard about today. 
I said yes. 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 Oh, sing it. I said guidance or clarity today if you need to find an answer to the limitation of your life financially or on any level I want you to one more time just say yes, yes. say yes to your healing yes. say yes to that blessing yes. say yes, yes to that clear mind yes yes, yes. Say yes to those new finances coming in. It's going to free you. Yes. Yes. I said yes. 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 I'm trying to hold it back and I don't think I should. Give it to us. Shitoromotai. Oh, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. I want you to leave here differently than you walked through those doors when you came in. I want every desert part of your life to blossom like a rose. I want the incorruptible seed of your truth to awaken in good earth and good ground of consciousness and bring forth itself 30 and 60 and 100 fold. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for letting us know you're here, feeling you. I know we need to stop, but I can't, I'm not going to stop until I feel the Spirit is through doing whatever it's doing. Whatever it's doing. Somebody's receiving, there's a few of you here receiving some download uh, right now. Spirit would say unto you, for there are many yet su many surprises that you have not anticipated. For when you think you're going this way, I will bring you that way. You have made your plans, but I have a higher purpose that shall be activated this day for you. And I shall take you off a path that seemeth right and the end of it is death. And I'll put you on a path of light that will bring you to a full and perfect day. For you are here because of the cry of your heart. Many of you for years and decades have sought for this day. This day that you're entering to right now is your day. This is your time. Prepare to receive my glory, my presence. Say a spirit. Whew. 
I'm declaring the gifts of the Spirit to be activated here in Heartlight. That people getting up will not get up because it's a planned thing, but people will get up by the Spirit. And the Spirit will bring forth its own meditations. It'll bring forth its own songs. It'll bring forth its own messages. And it shall bring forth its own way in which we deal with sickness and illness as we truly become a Spirit-guided people. Take a breath. 